Hello, welcome back to my bench. Today, we got a couple of boards. Um, I was asked by a local radio station to see if I could figure out what was wrong with these boards by the description that I was given. And the description was that one of them wasn't reporting the voltages correctly and the other one wasn't reporting the current correctly. These boards come out of a Harris Z5 transmitter, uh, FM transmitter, and they are the controller car cards and the cards that report all the voltages and necessary stuff back to um, back to the machine. So I got two of them here, and since they had different problems, I brought it home and uh, used a variety of different pieces of equipment, the mo biggest of which was the uh, Mr. Carlson, uh, his uh, curve tracer that's built into an old W066 RCA scope. It gives you um, a good curve that doesn't actually mean anything, but if one thing is different than the other, if you've got two of them to compare, it pretty much can't be beat, but anyway, in the process of looking around, I noticed that it's got a bunch of these little capacitors on here, and all of these capacitors are were shot. I mean, just just shot. the 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 values were way off. The um, most of them had ESRs in the well, my meter will read 0.14K, so 140 ohms, and you want them to be down somewhere for 10 microfarads. You want them to be somewhere down under 1 or 1 or around there. <clears throat> and all of them were 3950, 140 ohms, something like that. So I changed all the caps first, and while I was doing that, I noticed that um, one of them... Uh, had been ripped off the board. If I can find it... Okay, I found it. Um, anyway, this is what it looked like when I took it apart. We can see here the, um, <laughs> the pad is completely gone and so is the little trace that leads over to this via over here. Anyhow, I messed around with that for a while, and I managed to cut a little little tiny piece of uh, foil, uh, copper foil, and a little wire going through the via, soldered it in and got it onto this. There's another piece of foil underneath there, well, it's attached to this one, to, uh, to make it. And after all that was done, I got it soldered on there, <laughs> and the caps on there, and I tested it out, and it does go to where it's supposed to go to, so took care of that part. Um, that was fun. And uh, then I set about finding out what was wrong. If we take a look at the manual over here... Well, where is it? Um, yeah. We can see up in here, we've got our supply voltages. This is a uh, analog to digital, 16 lines in, one line out, um, multiplexer, demultiplexer -multipl and demultiplexer. Uh, and this takes all of the inputs, the supply voltage, supply 1 volts, supply 2 volts, the current from different sensors, uh, the 7KW, I don't know, res, whatever that is, um, 2.7, eh, I don't know, but anyway, <laughs> it takes all of the sensors, brings them in, rotates through them, puts them out to, um, the analog input of the display board, and I started measuring these. Well, on one board, 
which was um, uh, which one's one one this one here. I noticed that on this chip, the one we were just looking at, which is this guy right here, I noticed that uh, all of the connections or all of the resistances through the um, say, uh, the tracer, the um, curve tracer, were all the same as far as the inputs go, except for one. And I went and looked back on the manual, and the one that was not right was on pin uh, 20 or 21. I can't remember, but it was on one of those two. And all the rest of them read about, uh, well, they, they had a nice little jiggly curve um, that kind of looked like a, oh, flattened S a little bit. Except for that one, it didn't have anything. Um, and it, it was just open. So I figured, okay, that one might be bad. Uh, so I uh, I ordered them and got them. And uh, got, them, got them in. Didn't take very long. Um, actually, that was on this board here. Yeah, this board. Uh, pulled the chip off, replaced it. Um, and it looks pretty good. There's no shorts. <laughs> Um, and it was hard to get off because it was glued down pretty heavily. So then I said, okay, what about the other board? The other board was reporting the wrong currents. And that's the board with the bad, uh, bad capacitor, which now is on there. It's right, right there. Um, and I, I started, I looked at this one and I found that, um, this chip had already been replaced at one time before. None of the other chips on here have been touched. This one had already been replaced and the board has a sort of I don't know, sort of a dusty sort of look to it. See this one's all nice and shiny. Can you see that? And this one's all kind of dusty. See down here? I don't know what's going on there. Uh, but this board had been worked on before. And I started measuring those, and I found out on this one that if we look here, we were looking at PA4, pin 25 was not showing the same thing as the rest of the pins. So I figured, okay, I'll change this chip too. Well, when I went to look at it um, to, to get it off of there, I found uh, this right here, right, right there. Isn't that nice? That was about about a four four or five k short between pins three and four of that chip. Now, I don't know what all that did to it. However, if we go look at the manual again, right here, 4 is ground. Pin 3 doesn't appear to be used in this setup. So I don't, there's two of these chips, one just like the other. But I just, I, you know, I thought, well, that's interesting anyway. So I, I pulled that thing off of there, um, put the new chip on, and it's on there pretty well too, I think. But it had already been replaced. So those guys are recapped, new chips are on, cleaned up, and ready to go. Tomorrow, Monday, I'm going to go into... Uh, over to the station uh, and um, put these in and see if they work. I've gone about as far as I can go. I can't test anything else. They're just, they are what they are. Uh, with I can't bring the Z5 refrigerator size transmitter back with me and I don't have the equipment there to work on it. So all I can do is 
mess with the boards. I did go along and check other stuff. I checked the voltage regulators down here. Uh, this is a voltage regulator. I checked those to make sure that they were working. Um, supplied a little voltage, see what happened. And all this seems to be fine now that I've replaced the caps. Everything seems to be happy. But uh, tomorrow we'll see what happens. Uh, <laughs> I hope it works. It'll make me look good anyway. So, this will be continued. Okay, I know it's noisy in here, guys, but uh, there it is. Harris Platinum Z5. And those boards I fixed go in here. Right up those two uh, slots up there. So now we stick them in, cross our fingers, pray to the RF gods and hope it works. All right, here we go. <laughs> Pull it out all the way, that might help. It was nice of them to make it that way. It is. Yeah, without these guys working, all of your voltages and currents and everything is wrong. Right, Bill? <laughs> right. And there's lots of plugs to go on the back. I think I have steady cam on, I hope. Okay, I got there's lots of little boards in here. Lots of ICs. Lots of things to go wrong. However, how old is this transmitter, Bill? Mm, 23 years old, I believe. 23 years old, so it's still working. You can't say too much bad about it. I'm working now. Second board's in. There's a bar across here. Normally, yeah. Yeah. Hold them still when it vibrates. <laughs> All right. Turn on the dummy load. Turn on the power. Get rid of the faults because it was turned off. It didn't know what it was doing. And here's hopefully where it works.
didn't work. Okay, so as you saw, um, it didn't work. Did a little bit more um, oh, checking on it and found a problem. If we take a look at the manual here, there it is. We can see that the, um, make this a little bigger, that, uh, wrong page, that we have our sample voltages. Um, this is VD1 sample, comes in through J11 on this board, and it goes down here to R9 and R10. If we look at R9 and R10, which are over here, where there's R9, we can see that's what, 112.7 ohms. R10 is 9.08 K, so that's 100, sorry, that's 112 K and R10 is 9.08 K, so that's that's fine, that's right there. Um, but if we go down to the other one, our VO2 sample, which is right here, it comes down to R43 and um, R44. So if we take a look, R43 is up here someplace. Here's R40. Here's R44. If we take a look at R44, we got what 9.08k, and R43, we got 10 mega ohms. So. <laughs> Looking back at the manual, we can see that R43 here, part of a voltage divider, goes right out to uh, power supply 2 volts, uh, which is on uh, sheet 2D8. Shrink this down so it doesn't take too long to get up there. Sheet 2, D8, D, and hold still, 8, D8. Sheet 2, D8, PA2 temperature, pin 20. That was the one we had problems with on this chip. Now, that chip, Make sure we're going where we're supposed to be going here. Get rid of the manual. So if I go from one side of R43 over to pin 20, so there's uh, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. It's showing what mega ohms and the other side 15 16 17 19, 15 16 17 18 19 20 get on the right side of this thing 19 meg on one side, 18k on the other. Uh, we're going to take that off. And um, replace it because it's definitely an open resistor. So evidently that chip shorted before before it died at least that's the only thing I can think whoops 
Let us... Check this guy. Let's see what we got. Overload. It is completely open. Okay, so we need 113. I know I don't have exactly that value, but we'll see what we can come up with here. Hmm. What do you got? 121. 119. Come on. Come on. Hundred eighteen. Hundred nineteen. Hundred. 19, 118, 119, yeah, all the way too close, darn it, 119, 120, that one's accurate, huh? 120, So I think which one was 118? That's 119. We'll take this fourth one in here. Well, we'll put you away later. Okay. This is just a little bit fiddly. are all banged into each other over here. Where are you? There you are. Close. Okay. How does that look? It's not a 1%. I hope that won't make too much of a difference. Measure across that now. We got 118. All right. Well. That seems to be back where it's supposed to be. Okay. Well. We'll give that a shot and see if it works. If it does, 
I might just go ahead and order a uh, 113k resistor for it. Um, this is for a backup transmitter. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna take this thing back over and uh, try it again and see if we can get that thing to to light up. All right, we're back and uh, with the proof of concept. <laughs> Please work. I did bring uh, soldering iron and extra resistors with me. Well, it didn't go poof. Thanks for watching, folks. Sorry about the noise, but this is real life.